Let's take a look at a feature known as Auto Select Layers. You may have seen it before because there's a checkbox of that name that's in the options bar when you're in the move tool up at the top of your screen. But there's a lot more to it than just a little checkbox. If you get used to this feature, you can suddenly become very fast at switching which layer you'd like to work on. And if you get used to a few little keyboard shortcuts, even moving those layers up or down in your layer stack. Let's dive in and take a look. In this image, you can see that I have many different layers and I'd like to be able to switch between them quickly. I'm in the move tool and in the move tool up here is a checkbox in the upper left called auto select. And by default, it's turned on, but you may have turned it off after installing Photoshop because it's sticky. It will remember the last setting it was set to. Well, if I come into this image and I click on a layer like this top one, um, it's going to switch and make that layer active. If you watch my layers panel, you'll see if I click in this area, a different layer becomes active. And if I click on other areas within the image, you'll see the layer in my layers panel changing. But it's not just switching layers. The moment you click, you can also start dragging. And if you do, we can very quickly reposition all these layers. And the thing about it is that it's not going to allow you to get to every single layer that's in your layers panel. Because some of these layers, like let's say this bottom most layer, if I turn it off and back on again, off and back on again, I can't see it within the picture. That's because it's covered up by all the layers that are above. So how can I get to a layer that is deep underneath? Well, if you look at this layer, notice its name is 1761. Well, when I come over here, if I have auto select layer turned on, I can right click. And if I do, it's going to give me a list of all the layers that contain information directly underneath my mouse. And this should be in the same stacking order as they're shown in the layers panel. So if I want to get to the lowest layer that's not the background, I'm going to choose right here. And when I do, if you look in the layers panel, you see that really low layer is now active. But the problem is, how can I now drag it? If I have auto select layers turned on, then the moment I click my mouse, it's going to grab the topmost layer that contains something underneath my mouse, and that's the one I'm going to be moving. What I want to move is that bottom most layer. So I'm going to right click once again and choose the bottom most layer that's not the background so I can get that layer targeted. Then I could turn off the auto select layer checkbox and then it doesn't matter where I click in my image because it's no longer going to be changing layers as I click. It will keep the um, same layer active the whole time. Well, the problem is I don't like moving my mouse to the upper left of my screen to do that regularly. So there's another trick you should know about. And that is if you hold down the command key on a Mac, which is control in Windows, watch what happens to auto select layers. If I hold down command, it just changes to the opposite of the setting that was on earlier, but only for the length of time I have that command key held down. Then when I let go of the command key, it goes back to the setting it was at before. Therefore, if I target that bottom most layer and I decide I don't want to change which layer is active at the time I click, I hold down the command key. Then I can move that layer around as much as I'd like. And only when I want to target another layer do I let go of the command key. And then it goes back to using auto select layers. But holding down the command key is going to temporarily turn it off. So this layer right here is active and I can click up here if I hold down the command key and still move it. And that's quite nice. So for me personally, I leave auto select layers turned off at all times. And therefore, it never switches which layer I'm working on unexpectedly. And if I want to target a layer very quickly by clicking, then with auto select turned off, I just hold down the command key, click and drag, and I can target layers as I would like. And when I'm done, I just let go of the command key. And now if I click and drag, it'll stay on whatever layer is currently active in my layers panel. Then there's more you can do with this. Let's say I would like to move a bunch of layers. Well, I'm going to target this topmost layer by command clicking on it. Then I'm going to move over here to this layer and I'm about to command click, which would usually make that layer active. But instead, I'm going to add the shift key. If you add the shift key, watch the layers panel. Notice that the topmost layer is currently active in when I add shift and click. Now I'm adding another layer. I can do that again over here. 
and maybe over here. And I can target as many layers as I want. Then I'm gonna let go of all keys on my keyboard because that's gonna bring me back to auto select layers being turned off. And now I can move all those layers together uh, very easily. Just know I was holding down two keys, command, which turned on auto select layer temporarily, and shift, which means toggle, will this layer become selected or deselected? And I can deselect layers that way as well. Get rid of a few of them, let go of any keys on my keyboard, and then I can move them around. Now that's not the only way to get more than one layer. If what you have out here beyond the edge of your layers contains either nothing, where it looks like a checkerboard, I'll turn off the bottom most layer to show you that look, or what's filling that area is contained on a layer that's called background. Then you have a little bit more functionality. And that is when I have auto select layers turned on, and remember mine I leave turned off by default, so I'm gonna hold down the command key to temporarily turn it on. Now, as long as I start my mouse within that area that is either the background layer or it looks like a checkerboard, then I can click and start to drag. And now any layer that touches this rectangle is going to become active in my layers panel. Then I can let go. And before I move the layer, I just let go of that command key so that auto select layer goes off again. And now I can move all those layers at once. And so it can be a very nice way of working with layers as long as you can see the layer you'd like to target. You just command click and say, I want this one. You can add shift and grab a few more. Let's say all those, let go of any key. And now you can move those all together. Then remember that you can also right click and get that list. And let's say I wanted to get that bottom most layer. Well, I'm gonna hold shift and I'll command click and then I'll come down here and try to target one of the other layers. And the one layer I can do right there and it just added it. So holding down shift and using control to get a list of layers is something that will allow me to add to or take away from the layers that are already selected. But then what if in my layers panel, I wanted to move those layers up or down in my layers stack? Well, if you look on your keyboard, there's usually square bracket keys. On my keyboard is right above the return key, just below the delete key. I see kind of half square icons. Let's say I target a layer, maybe the topmost one here. And then what I'm gonna do is hold down the command key on the Mac, control on Windows, and I'm gonna use the left bracket and take a look at the layer in my layers panel. Look at his layer name, you see it ends in 5.1, and you see that layer ending in 5.1 moving down in my layers panel or moving up. That's because I'm holding down the command key and I'm using those brackets. Now, if I end up moving that, I can also add shift. And if I add shift, I can move it to the bottom or the top of the layer stack. So I can very quickly promote layers up towards the top. Let's say I wanna target this layer and then I'll do shift, command, right bracket. And I just brought it to the top. Or maybe I wanna slip it underneath all the others. Well, that's shift, command, left bracket. And so you can very quickly change the stacking order of all sorts of layers. I can grab more than one layer, just as we did before, and then use those same keyboard shortcuts to push them to the bottom of the stack or the top of the stack, and therefore easily manipulate my layers. Now, if you like using keyboard shortcuts like that, there are a few more, and that is if I, instead of using the command key in those brackets, I use the option key, which is Alt and Windows. Then watch my layers panel. I'm gonna do option and right bracket. And notice what it's doing. It's not moving a layer up in my layers panel. It is changing what layer is active. And if I use the left bracket with option held down, Alt and Windows, we go the opposite direction. Now you can combine many of the ideas I've been discussing, just like before when I held down the shift key to add more than one layer, well, I can add shift right now if I wanna select more than one layer or deselect. And so it's a very quick way of selecting layers. Then if I go back to holding down the command key this time, and then using the brackets, I can move all those layers up or down in my layers panel. This time adding shift goes to the top or the bottom of my layers panel. And therefore we can very quickly change between our layers. Now there's a little more to this. Let's say that I were to come and take all of these layers and I decide to put them in a folder. 
That folder is known as a group, and if I have more than one layer selected at the time I click it, it will automatically put all those layers inside of the group. Then if I expand the group, I can see the layers that are contained within. Well, now it's a little bit different because up here you'll notice in my options bar, it says auto select and there's a pop-up menu afterwards that says layer. Well, when it's set to layer, it's going to ignore the fact that there's a group there. And if I were to target one of the layers inside of the group by command clicking on where I can visibly see the layer, it'll open the group right up and it will select just that individual layer so I can reposition it. If, on the other hand, I change this pop menu to group, now when I command click on any layer that's contained within inside that group, it doesn't select the individual layer, it selects the entirety of the group. And therefore, all the layers that are inside the group will move together. And so if you're working with a very complex document, which I often am, and you have extensive use of groups, it can be nice to change between targeting individual layers in targeting entire groups. Then if you wanna be able to rotate these things because you see how the weird angles these are all at, we also have the choice up here of show transform controls. If I turn that on and I'm gonna have this set to auto select layer, now I can very quickly click on a layer, grab one of these little corners, or in fact, I'll go just outside the corner and I could rotate. Then if I press the return key, it will think I'm done and I can command click on a different layer, move my mouse just outside and rotate it as well. Just remember to hit return or enter when you're done. Otherwise, it will think that when you click next, you're still messing with the transformation controls, but we can scale and rotate. And once we're done up here, just turn off that checkbox. Now there still are a few limitations of using this. I just opened a texture. And let's say I wanna take this texture and I'm gonna drag it over to that other file and just put it on top. Uh, and I'm gonna move that to the top of my layer stack. Then in order to apply the texture, I might change the blending mode to a choice similar to overlay mode. Well, just because you can see through that layer visibly over here, doesn't mean Photoshop's gonna be able to see right through it. When I hold down the command key and I click, now the topmost layer that actually contains information is that one right there at the top of your layers panel. And so suddenly I'm unable to target any of the other layers without right clicking and choosing from the menu. And then I could move this layer around and I could right click here and just choose the topmost choice in the menu and easily get to all these things. Although this one here is in a group and it's going to list only the group. And I could try to go into the group by choosing something underneath that. So if you right click and you see the word group, it means that layer is inside of a group with some others, but you'll find the layer indented right below the group name and you'll be able to target it. Then let's look at another limitation. Let's say that I would like to apply an adjustment to this image and I make a selection. I'll start in the upper left corner and I'll just select approximately the top half of the image. Then I'll create an adjustment layer and I'm gonna use adjustment layer called hue and saturation. And I'll bring the saturation lower just so you can tell there's been a change to the image and you can see exactly where it stops. Then I'm gonna hide that layer that contains our texture so that uh, we don't target that layer accidentally. I'll go to my move tool and now I'm gonna to try to use auto select layers. And down here at the bottom, it works just fine. And that's because if I look at the topmost layer that contains that adjustment, it has a layer mask in the bottom half of the layer mask is full of black indicating that this adjustment does not affect that bottom portion that I've been targeting down here. If on the other hand, I go up here to the top portion of the image and I attempt to command click to select a layer like this one, watch my layers panel. When I command click the topmost layer that's doing anything in that area is my adjustment layer. So you're gonna find that anytime you have adjustment layers and any part of their mask is white, then it's going to think that that particular layer uh, is contained up in that upper portion of the image in this case. So when I command click, if it's the topmost layer that's doing something in that area, that's what's gonna be targeted. So that's when once again, instead of command clicking, you right click 
And when you right click, the topmost layer will be that adjustment layer, but the one directly underneath it will be the first layer that contains pixels in that area. And then I could move it around. All I need to do is right click each time and not choose the name of the adjustment layer. And if I see the name of a group, go below that as well and grab the image that's there. Then I can target that. And if you're on a Mac and you're not used to right clicking, then control click. Control clicking is the equivalent to right clicking uh, if you had a two button mouse. So I can very quickly still get to these layers, just a little bit more cumbersome because of the adjustment layer. And you could always turn off the eyeball next to that temporarily, just for the length of time you need to be moving these layers around. And then when you're done, turn them back on. But if you practice a little bit using auto select layers, you're gonna find you can be dramatically faster and you no longer have to constantly stare at your layers panel. I'm Ben Wilmore and I'll see you next time.